Morning, girls. bucks so two different bucks and um, they are gonna breed our goat girls for us coming this fall so we only wanted one buck and if you have less than like four six goats you don't need a buck your girls can actually go on love dates to local bucks um, that other farmers have so you don't have to you know house a buck but we have plenty of space here on our farm and we have four girls and we'll quickly have more girls than that after they kid again so we thought why not we'll get a buck this year and instead of buying him a weather which is a buck that doesn't that's been castrated so it can't reproduce we thought why not we just buy him another buck friend that we can crossbreed with and then we never have to inbreed you know with um, anyways, that's all confusing. So, <laughs> so we're going to actually, today we're putting together the buck area and, um, we're going to have it on this little pasture right out here, which is kind of on the side of the mountain. Um, you want to keep your bucks separated from your girls because they smell and they'll breed like as young as two months old. They'll breed with their moms, their sisters. It's, it's gross. But hey, that's the animal kingdom. So help Frank, uh, we're gonna take some of these locust posts that we have in an area that we're not using anymore. And we're gonna take them out and we're gonna move them over um, here to put more permanent fencing in right here where we're gonna have the goat girls. And then we're gonna use these T posts back in the buck area. So thus the juggle of moving things around on the homestead begins. <music> So this is our go-to when it comes to our smoothies. It's our uh, Blendtec. It's a Blendtec blender, and yeah, we absolutely love it. It's uh, it, it will literally blend anything. So in this one, we've got some uh, carrot, maybe about, I don't know, about a small handful of baby carrots, maybe enough for about a carrot or two. Uh, we also have a couple of stalks of celery in it, and I added about a half of a cup to a cup of spinach. So I'm going to start off with this and blending it, and then I'll show you all the other stuff that we love to add. Personally, what I love to add into mine is some uh, essential oils, and so we'll have some wild orange, and there is some lemon here as well, and I'm going to feel frisky. I'll throw a little tangerine in it as well. Coconut milk. I have this superfood green drink that I picked up from Trader Joe's. I always love to add a scoop of that to my smoothie. This is it right here. I also love adding the Bulletproof MCT oil as well. And then I love adding apple cider vinegar. Uh, this is the one little piece that, well, I only love to do a teaspoon or a tablespoon of it. But all those other flavors in there, I know it doesn't look that fantastic right now, but all those other flavors in there really do help with the, uh, the acidity of the vinegar. So for sweetness, I love to add local honey. And then also, I also love putting in banana. Finished product. And then the real verdict is how do you guys feel about the smoothie? It's quiet? No, you can't talk while you're drinking, huh? <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Thank you.
So fencing ends up being one of the, uh, you know, concepts and one of the planning things that you have to do quite often. You know, folks think that, like, you know, once you have something set and uh, once it's ready to go and you have it fenced, then all of a sudden that's it. But here's the fun part. Animals are dynamic and they will prove to you time and time again, especially goats, how unbelievably good they are at uh, being able to find the weaknesses and find the holes or create holes in your fencing. So, you know, you have to take in careful consideration when it comes to fencing. Uh, the same goes true for housing. Um, you want to make sure that it's secure, uh, but really it's not a matter of it being secure for predators only. It's also a matter of it being secure so they don't find a weakness in that as well. We had one goat one time that somehow mastered the ability to uh, use their mouth in order to be able to physically move a latch up, over, and then let it go back down in order to be able to open up our barn doors. Pretty fascinating and unbelievable. And when you think like, you know, it's an animal, how, in it, how is it able to do this? They've got nothing but time, so they figure it out. But uh, yeah, so we're, I'm, I'm getting attacked again by a turkey. So of course I've lost train of thought. <laughs> chance to see yet. But look at this. Another thing we gotta do is where, by the way, you notice how even though it's raining, it doesn't matter, we're still out here working. So we call that far pasture over there, just beyond that fence, we call that our western pasture. I'm, I'm sorry, we call that the corner pasture, and then we call this our western pasture. And as you can see, I need to get in here and do a little weed maintenance uh, for this western pasture. But regardless is that now we have a high western pasture that goes through this gate right here, and then goes up here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna put the sheep and the cows can go on the slower aspect of both of these. What we gotta do is bury this line, which was used just to simply connect our electricity going around that way. We wanna be able to actually now bury this underneath the ground, insulate it, in order to be able to have it as a walkthrough gate. Because of course, if I open the gate right now, no animal is gonna really wanna walk through it. You know, the shorter ones can walk under it, but a cow is not gonna walk through this because that white line's right in the way. So, old hose, got a couple of connectors, and you'll see me put it together, and uh, hopefully we'll have the finished product here in a short while. Be a lot more durable. And now it is a walkthrough gate. So I'm gonna go back and grab some dirt, fill it in, and we should be good to go. Come on, guys. Yep. Hopefully, I won't be chasing you later. There you go, you're up. A whole new field. <laughs> oh, my That's where goodness. we'll be. Yeah, this is only shoulder high. So they say that nothing grows in North Carolina there. Uh, Who says that? They're full of it. Oh, hi, Porter. Come on, buddy. Come on. You're good. Come on.
I'm spinning. This is Jacob sheet yarn that was mixed with a little alpa alpaca, but that's the consistency of the skein that we get. This, by the way, is called a skein. So you get like, oh, I don't know how many yards a skein is, but you get an entire skein with it. My daughter absolutely loves crocheting with it, so I'm rolling and it up. And if you don't roll yard. it up, it becomes a mess. It becomes a tangled bowl of spaghetti. That is absolutely no end to uh, to its misery that it can cause you. 